Um, who wants to help duck this? You have to talk about spit class first. <laughs> artists have been asked to design or creatively interpret furniture. We're not very good at making furniture, but we uh, have better ideas than furniture makers have. I think it's our take and what we understand, you know, the future of furniture to be. Well, I didn't know Gino actually come up with the idea. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, what, what does it mean? Spitclap is a grey area between fine art and design. It's a bit of fun, it's a bit of fun. fun Johnny. It's not fun. I thought it was German or something. <laughs> <laughs> it's from the angle of fine artists making furniture um, with a view to making the furniture functional yet um, abundantly creative. Why are you smoke? Uh, because furniture shops are really boring. Uh, like, there's no reason why you shouldn't have smoke, apart from the fire safety. Shouldn't have exciting bravado live music smoke effects. The curatorial decision making process was quite an interesting one. There was a lot of awkward moments where we started discussing what a chair is. It was, it's interesting because you know it's quite a challenge for everyone. Everyone's got a kind of Everyone has to go away and come up with an idea, but then at the end of the day we all have to work together and curate it together. Um, and it's difficult to, because it's such an odd boundary between what we're essentially setting up a shop, it's gonna be, it's, there's going to be some things that are quite difficult to, uh, to get across. We did the pilot um, at the university, at Loughborough University, mostly to see how it would look. And, what people's reaction would be, you know, um, and it, I thought it looked really good, so we agreed to go ahead with it and put it on in Leicester. I mean, we're quite fortunate that both our parents are in the furniture business. Um, yeah, so we kind of have an inside track <laughs> yeah. on what furniture is and how it's made and how they design it and stuff. Yeah. So. I don't. I don't think that helped. Either of us, so when we came to make the golden nugget. If anything, it was a hindrance. It was yeah. a hindrance. Yeah. yeah. My work at the moment is about the shift of religion and science and things like that, and all that kind of abandoning, abandoning of tradition and things like that. And then your work is. And my work's about questioning the reality of photograph and deconstructing the reality of photograph through print. We're going to make this kind of multi-use table. And then um, you tried try to draw Tracy Island. <laughs> and failed. And, that, and then it was kind of an interesting blob on a table with legs. Yeah. So we kind of developed it from that. And um, instead of making Tracy Island, we thought we'll spray it gold. I think I don't think it's any better than any of the other pieces. Mm. It's just it's I just, suppose it's just gold. gold. It's gold, isn't it's it? Gold. Yeah. It's probably <laughs> people change. like gold, don't they? Yeah. More works have gone on to be not as dark, uh, a lot more appealing to everybody. Um, I don't know if I like it, but everybody else seems to like it, so if if it works like that, then I'm pleased for it. Uh, the work for Spit Clap, well, I've produced a sort of a multifunctional rug or sheet made out of the foil that you get from Tunnock's Tea Cakes. You should either be, you know, upright or lying down, you know, sitting in a chair like I am at the moment, is not supposed to be healthy for your posture and it can knack your back and stuff. So I called it by the rug the tunnocks technique and that it's just it's just like a flat sort of plane that would function as like a bed or a rug or a table or a chair and it's just it's free to the imagination. One of my pieces of furniture is an abstract sculpture which doubles as a shoe holder. And I was quite—I thought it would be quite an interesting take on abstract sculpture, which is often positioned on the floor, and then shoes, which are also often positioned on the floor, and combining them to make a, a furniture object. My work, in one sense, 
in one piece is completely pra pra practical. But I've made two pieces for this show, and the second one is a Salvador Dali dream catcher, which isn't really very practical in in the sense that it, it's, it looks like this. And you, it's, it would be quite difficult to sleep under those conditions if you actually bought it and hung it over your bed. Just don't do your back in there. Yep. Easy. That'll do. There we are. This is how you do a concrete chair, people. I mean, uh, it's going to be a stool, basically. Uh, a very, you know, it can be put outside because it's obviously not going to deteriorate. You can put it inside if you've got a really, really robust floor, um, you know. And I think it's just going to be one of those things that if you had like a circle of them, I can imagine that it'd be really quite good to have like as a firing, you know. Because obviously you can't usually put like an old chair too close to a fire because it'll get singed or whatever or now and catch the light and people start getting bent and stuff. So I think. This is like going to be like a hardware and endurance product, which I think is uh, such a simple thing because anyone with a bucket can do, and they have to be really strong to lift it. However, but once you put it in place, you'd have to move the damn thing. And the other thing is, it'll never get blown away. So, and no one's ever going to nick it because, uh, well, it's too damn heavy. Like I say, I basically work on paintings, um, and I haven't done sculpture for about six years, so. It's been good to get back into it, although it's been quite hard thinking in a 3D way again. What, what I've done is I'm using using a, a stage uh, scaffold to put one uh, bunk uh, sofa on top of another one, uh, so four people can sit in the same space that just two people would usually sit. So um, it's quite simple, really. But during the World Cup, um, when we didn't have enough space for um, people to sit down at had the idea to put one sofa on top of the other and um, people were saying it was completely impractical but um, I suppose this gave me the opportunity to prove them wrong. We were inspired by uh, what we'd done earlier in the year which was um, a website that me and Rich designed um, called Hello Google which is basically um, sounds that are associated with certain images so we've kind of gone with that theme really. We designed it to, uh, to look like something from Ikea because then we were, we were sort of fingers crossed that someone would actually buy it and put it in their lounge. Thinking about it, it's, it doesn't really look so. No, no, not at all. It's poorly engineered furniture yeah. with horrific imagery inside. Yeah. yeah. It was hard for me to make furniture that was also functional, that could also sell, uh, that also had a commercial appeal to it. Uh, at first I did come up with designs for conceptual work um, and then it was kind of discussed that they wouldn't sell. In fact I think it kind of helped because it took one of the small, smaller ideas, what was more of a side product, which was the lamp, the crow lamp, and embellished it more and made more of that and I think that was more successful as a piece because of that. It's a taxidermy crow, uh, but instead of a head, that's been removed, um, and it's a regular black desktop lamp, uh, which the taxidermy crow sits on top of, the lamp goes up inside of it, and instead of a head it has a functional working lamp. I made a trap table. Um, to make people think about homelessness while they're uh, sitting at home uh, in their homes, flipping around, uh, while they're drinking coffee or something, or putting their newspaper down. And they can think about uh, people who are homeless and like what it means, what it means to them. Thinking that the general aesthetic of the show is maybe uh, uncontrollable. Now, particularly now that everything's moving at lightning pace, that people are going to have to be more willing to give up what they're the best at and start branching out into other things, what they don't know of. I don't think we really knew 
what we were expecting from it. Hopefully a lot of people will be uh, walking past on their way to the new Werner Herzog film and think it's a very interesting uh, shop slash exhibition thing going on there. It could go either way, it could go one or two things. They could either be utterly enthralled by it and inspired and want to buy everything in the shop and make the house into some wacky sort of um, mansion full of weird and wonderful furniture or they could be utterly just bemused and like horrified. Instead of going to Archeo Library Central 